Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics on the video question line. Today's topic is centered around ISO versus ASME when we're considering the position tolerance and really any other tolerance that's controlling features of size. Uh, today's question is how do I inspect true position or position uh, if my drawings reference the ISO standards? So let's dig right in. Here we have an example drawing of a very simple part, just a square uh, block with a round hole in it. Uh, we have three sides being identified as datum features. Datum feature A being identified as this top surface here. Datum feature B being identified as this bottom surface here. And datum feature C being identified as this left surface here. So we're controlling the position of this hole. Now for ASME and ISO, the feature control frame will look the same. And we're controlling the same feature, right? So we're controlling a cylindrical feature. And generally, fundamentally, ASME and ISO as well are saying we're controlling the central elements of this cylinder. So wherever the cylinder ends up, we know we are controlling to a diametric or cylindrical tolerance zone with a diameter of five thousands. So if this hole deviates up and to the right a little bit, as long as the center of that hole is still in our tolerance zone, we have a passing feature. Now where ASME differs slightly than ISO is how we get the central element of this hole. ASME clearly tells us we have a central axis of that hole and the ISO takes it a little bit differently. And there's two very distinct definitions that the ISO and the ASME use. ASME, as I said, will measure an axis or in the case of a square slot like a keyway, uh, you're, you're controlling the position of a midplane. So let's just focus on the axis here since we're talking about a cylindrical example. So we're controlling the axis of that cylinder. Now, how do we get a perfect axis from a cylinder that likely has form and orientation error, right? There's some orientation error as well as form error of that cylinder. That's just how the real world works. Well, how we get a perfect axis to represent that cylinder is what we call the UAME or the unrelated actual mating envelope. Now, theoretically, we have this envelope that expands inside or around an external feature. Uh, in this case, it's an internal feature, so we're expanding. This perfect cylindrical cylinder or the cylindrical envelope will expand inside our feature until it settles on the high points of our feature. Now, now that that envelope is a perfect cylinder, we can get an axis from that perfect envelope. And that axis is the axis that represents the feature we're measuring. So that's our central element that has to stay inside our tolerance zone. This blue uh, cylinder here is going to be our tolerance zone. As long as this axis is inside that tolerance zone, located and orientated to our datum reference frame, this feature, the dark gray part here, passes a position specification. And that's exactly how the ASME defines controlling features of size. Now ISO, like I said, very similar in its fundamental setups, we're still controlling the central element, we're still controlling it to a cylindrical uh, tolerance zone back to a datum reference frame, but where it does deviate ever so slightly, uh, conceptually, is we are controlling the extracted derived feature. Now that extracted derived feature comes from the extracted integral feature. That could look a lot like a cross section of this cylinder. So you'd get a circle and the center of that circle, the central center point is gonna be our extracted derived feature. And now we can get a bunch of these extracted derived features to create this uh, abstract line. Now, as long as this line stays inside this tolerance zone, we are passing position specification per ISO. Now, for those of you that are in the inspection world, uh, this might look like a hybrid of what you're actually doing depending on the tooling and what you're using to measure that position. Uh, for those of us that are using best fit gauge pins in a hole and checking the location of that gauge pin, uh, you're doing something very close to mimicking the unrelated actual mating envelope. For those of us that have a large diameter and we just come in here with a height gauge and find out where this surface is and where this surface is, and then find the midpoint between those two, you're measuring a little closer towards the ISO side of things. 
And a lot of times we're doing a hybrid of both when we're actually physically measuring this part. And the ASME and the ISO standards don't tell us we have to follow any certain regulations when we inspect things. It's up to us as inspectors to say we got as close to the ASME or the ISO set of standards, depending on what's on my drawing, as close to that as possible uh, without spending too much time, money, or resources to confidently say this feature passed position specification as per the standard. So we can kind of deviate, but we have to know the risks associated to when we do deviate away from our uh, away from these standards when we do inspections. So again, for inspectors, you don't have to certainly uh, inspect things one way and one way only. You have to inspect it so you can confidently say you've met at least the conceptual parts of the standard you're supposed to be following. Hopefully this helps clarify the differences between ASME and ISO. And as I mentioned, uh, this is not just necessarily for position. This is how the two standards uh, measure features of size. And that might be for perpendicularity or parallelism, uh, not just necessarily position. So again, hopefully this helps you out clarify split the difference between the two. Again, fundamentally, uh, they're very similar uh, in the fact that they're just trying to check the central elements of a feature of size back to a datum reference frame and hold that to a tolerance zone. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Our goal is to be your best source for GDT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GDT on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GDT community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.